So welcome to yet another video for Introduction to Finance at Isma House. Today we're going to be looking at a growing normal annuity. And we're going to try to assess what do we do in this scenario? What do we need to identify? And how do we break this down into simple bite-sized pieces for you to succeed on your exam, assignment, or just your own personal experience for whatever the case may be. So with that said, let's push towards uh, this problem. We're going to walk through it together. We're going to solve this and we're going to make sure you're a pro after this. All right. So we have this question in which we have our friend Lucas who makes you the following offer. He will pay you back the money he borrows today. So he's borrowing money today over the next 15 years. He's going to pay you back something today. All right. He will make yearly payments with the first payment being $1,000.88 at the end of this year. All right, so that's something that maybe we want to highlight. The payments will grow by 15% every year thereafter. So that's important. We know that this is growing by 15% every year. If the appropriate discount rate is 5%, how much would you be willing to lend Lucas today? So we got a whole lot of information. This is really good. And we're trying to seek what we're going to lend Lucas today. And this is important. The first thing to do when you see a question of this nature on your exam is to break it down into the different pieces you would know that you need to solve, you know, different types of time value questions. And we know that when we're looking at TVM, in other words, time value of money, we know that we're only looking at a few different buckets, annuities and perpetuities. Now within annuities, we know that we have normal annuities, annuities due and growing annuities. All right. Then within the second bucket, we know that we have normal perpetuities and then growing perpetuities. All right. And we want to be able to make the distinction between these two buckets and then dive deep within those buckets to find exactly which type of question we're dealing with. So within this question, we have some really important information. It's this idea, and we're going to highlight it in red, is this idea of something happening at the end of this year. All right. This is crucial. At the end of this year, it really means for us that we're dealing with something, all right, that is a normal annuity. A normal annuity, essentially, will always have the following keyword, all right, that we have at the end of this year. That would be the first step to take. But then we're also telling you something that is growing by 15% every year. That one payment is growing by 15% every year. So now, logically, you know, okay. We know that we have three types of annuities. Therefore, it can't be, you know, a annuity due because we know that this is happening at the end of this year. But we also know that it's growing. Therefore, it's obvious. <laughs> it's obvious. And I know I'm taking this into small steps, but it's obvious that we're dealing with a growing annuity. So that's amazing. Now we know because of this little part right here, it's totally obvious to us. We're, de we're dealing with, I'm going to zoom in for that, a growing annuity. All right. And once we know this, I mean, the steps become really, really, really straightforward. All right. It's all about plugging it in within our function, plugging it in within our timeline and trying to get a better sense of what we're seeking. And to make this really clear, once again, what we're seeking right now is we're trying to figure out how much you would be willing to lend Lucas today, knowing all these different factors. That he's giving you about, uh, you know, $1,000.88 every year, and you know it's growing by 15%. So with that, you want to find a way to lend Lucas money that won't be too much or too little vis-a-vis, -vis, you know, the parameters being given to you, all right? And in order to do so, what we're going to do to make this simple, we're going to identify what is the function for a growing annuity. And then from there, we're going to try to identify the different elements within that function and then solve for our answer. We're going to do it step by step together. All right. All right. Now that we have our growing annuity formula, we want to be able to identify different parts of this formula and then plug them in and make it super simple for us. Once again, we're taking small steps. We're taking our time. But when you're going to be on your exam, you're going to be fully empowered to do this in seconds. All right. So the first element, we have this thing called PV0. What does that mean? Okay, PV0, and we're going to highlight it in this different color. This thing right here simply means the present value. Okay, and the present value means, well, how much money will we lend today? Okay, so this is the present value. And in other words, 
This is going to say, how much money will we lend today? Okay. So in other words, this is exactly what we're seeking. This is exactly what we're seeking, right? The prompt says, how much money would you be willing to lend Lucas today? How much you would lend today? All right. For this specific scenario, we could say that the following statements are totally synonymous. Okay. So now it's becoming fairly obvious to us. We know that payments, all right. That's simply going to be equal the first payment that he's going to be giving to us, Lucas, at the end of this year. So this, in this case, would be $1,000.88. And then we want to be able to identify um, different elements such as K. What is K for us? K, in this sense, will be our discount rate. All right. If you studied um, the material and if you studied my notes, you know that K is essentially your discount rate or your interest rate, depending on the type of function we're looking at, the type of scenario we're looking at. In this case, we want to find the present value. So K will be our discount rate. But if we were seeking the future value, K would be our interest rate. A little nuances to understand here. But in other words, for a simple problem question like this, you need to know that K is simply your discount rate or your interest rate, and there are different terms that they could use. But for now, we know that this, because this is our discount rate, we know that this is 5%. And then finally, the last, uh, the before last step that we need is knowing G. Now G is super simple for us, G stands for growth, and we know that this payment is growing by 15% every year. So, I mean, you're lucky, you're getting 15% extra every year, God bless you, all right? So with that being said, we know that G, our growth rate in this case, is how much our payment will grow every year, that being 15%, okay? And finally, last but not least, um, the classic. We want to know, well, what's our time horizon here? For how long are we looking at this? Well, what are the considerations that we need to look at, right? And this is a simple concept to apply. And I'm giving you a little bit, you know, like anecdotal uh, stuff as well. If you're going to invest or if you're going to lend somebody money, you would want to know how long you're lending them that money. And that's why we have N right here. We have our little friend N. N really does stand for the time horizon, how long we, will, we are looking at here. And in this case, we told you that um, he will pay us back the money he borrows today over the next 15 years. So we know that our time horizon could be nothing other than that, 15 years. And that makes it extremely simple for us. All right. So we have 15 years. So now this becomes really straightforward and simple for us. All that we have to do is put this within our formula, plug all these numbers in and then get the answer. So let's do this step by step. So when you go through all of the different steps and you plug stuff within your function, you will have something that looks exactly like this. And let's take our red you know, stylus to be able to define everything. So as we said, we have our payments, then we have our K, we have our G, then we only have to look at our N right here and then you just plug everything in as per usual. I said that super quickly, but this idea here is that all you have to do is plug these things in. And once you've done that, you get to the following steps, right? It becomes super easy, it becomes simple math. So the real difficulty here is being able to identify what you need. And that gives us, once again, our present value, the value, what will we be willing to lend today? And from there, we just need to identify the different elements provided to us within the question. And with that, you find that the money you would be willing to lend Lucas today would be actually 31705 right? That, around that end. And with that, you would have your answer. Now, this is just another type of question in which you need to be able to identify what, ter what type of annuity we're looking at. Is it a annuity due? Is it a normal annuity or is it a growing annuity? And once you've identified that, it becomes really simple. It's either we're looking for the present value or the future value, or maybe some missing parts in between. But once you are able to identify the different variables between or within these functions, these formulas, all you have to do is plug and play. 
and being able to understand that and apply it and really leverage the tools I have accessible for you on ismahelps.com or through my other tutorials will give you the best chance to empower yourself and further your odds for success. And this is exactly what this video was all about. I hope this was helpful and there are many more tools available to you. You are able to do this. There are no reasons why not you should not succeed here. And I want to be able to help you out. So see you next time.